Welcome back to Corey's Corner. This series is brought to you by ThoughtsAndFitness.com. If you want to build your dream body, head on over to ThoughtsAndFitness.com and check out their monthly workout plans. For only $7 a month, you get access to high-intensity interval training, strength and conditioning, functional movements, pilometrics, and nutritional guidelines, plus a whole lot more. That's ThoughtsAndFitness.com. Guess who built ThoughtsAndFitness.com? It was me. And in this series, we're going to teach you how to build ThoughtsAndFitness.com. So if you're new to Rails, you're going to learn a whole, not, a whole lot in this series. We're going to teach you how to use gems like SimpleForm, Devise. You're also going to have uh, learn how to use Tailwind CSS, which is a front-end framework. We're going to install that gem in just one second. So if you're new to Tailwind, it's just like Bootstrap or any other framework, but I like it more because it has breakpoints in the CSS. It also has a whole bunch of really great looking components. I definitely want to purchase the, um, oh, they have new e-commerce ones. Yeah, I definitely want to purchase some of the, the premium ones they have in the future. But anyway, um, where was I going? So yeah, I'm going to teach you how to use Tailwind CSS basically and a whole bunch of other gems. Uh, we're going to go over best developer guideline practices. We're going to obviously be writing some tests and you're going to learn how to build a whole lot of neat controllers. Uh, we're also going to go over Stripe and stuff like that. So there's a whole lot that's going to go on in this series. But the first thing we need to do is we need to make our site look great. So we're going to install the Rails Tailwind CSS gem. So you're going to run this command first. This will install the Tailwind CSS Rails gem in your gem file. And then you will run this right here. And that will install Tailwind <clears throat> on your application. So I've already done that. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to make a controller and this is going to hold our landing page. So I'm going to do Rails G controller. It's going to be home and then it's going to have the home action. And then we need to make this root in our routes. I already did this right here, root to home home. So what this basically means is set the root of our application to the home controllers home action. and just in case you're watching this in the future, I'm on Rails version 6 with Ruby 2.7. Um, hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. And then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to create a nav bar. So we're going to do touch underscore nav app backslash views. Oops. App backslash views backslash underscore nav dot html dot erb. So this underscore, this touch, this command is um, to create a file. So we're creating a file nav.html.erb inside of the app views directory. And the underscore means that it's going to be a partial. So I'm not going to run the command because I already did that. But if you run that command, you can open up your views layout folder. And we see we have this file right here. Um, because it's an underscore, it is a partial, which means it can be rendered inside of other HTML classes. So to render a nav bar in each one of our pages, we're just going to come over to our application.html erb. We're going to come over to the body tag. We're just going to do percent equal render directory then the file name. So it's layouts underscore uh, backslash nav. You don't need the underscore. Um, so I used to be able to do this, but for some reason I have to include the full path name for it to work. <clears throat> and I'm going to start my developer server and I'm going to show you the nav bar I built. I'm not going to be coding a lot of the HTML um, in the series. If I have a big block of HTML, like a nav bar, I'm just going to show it to you guys on screen and you can do it because I don't want to waste your time and my time, let's be honest. So I come on over, I can come to localhost port 3000. We see we have our nav bar up right now. Everything is just linking to root, and we're going to walk through some of this code real quick. Make this nice and large so you guys can see everything. So pause the video here, create the nav bar, um, or you can listen to me talk either or just create the nav bar. So this is our nav bar. You'll see we have link to thoughtsandfitness.com. This is the big one over on the left, the big link over on the left. And typically I like to reserve this link. It'll just take you back to home, which will be the root. And I always like to make this the title of the application. 
So then next to, right next to this, we have a nav class. Um, and you'll see we have a bunch of breakpoints here. So PB, I mean, well, let's go over the breakpoints before I go over padding. So we're applying the medium breakpoint right here. If we hop on over to the Tailwind documentation, we can see where these breakpoints are. So I need to get here. Command F. Nope. Oh, I can just search right here. Breakpoints. So a breakpoint is just an arbitrary point, a, si a place on the screen where we want our something to be applied. So you have here the MD break breakpoint is at 768 pixels. And this is the same as saying at media min width 768, apply classes. If you don't know what this means, don't worry about it. All you need to know is that at 768 pixels plus, this class is gonna have a bottom padding of zero. At 768 pixels plus, this is gonna have a, a class of flex. So if I did at LG PB1, it would be between these two breakpoints. So this, it'll make more sense. So right now I have MD PB0 and LG PB1. That means between 768 and 1024, there's a bottom padding of zero, but at the LG breakpoint and up, it has a padding of one. So when you apply a breakpoint, if there's no other breakpoints applied, it is from that breakpoint up, from that size of screen up that that class gets applied, unless you apply another class at a higher breakpoint, then it is from there on up. I kind of confused myself. I hope that makes sense. On to the next thing. So I do have one knock for Tailwind, two knocks actually. Well, I think Tailwind looks great. I love it. That's why I use it for this tutorial. But the classes are very verbose. Like this is a whole lot of code, which is why I saved it in a variable. So we have PX, padding horizontal. We have text SM, text small, font semi-bold, background, BG transparent. Um, you'll see with the colors, you have shading. So the lower the, lower the number, the, the lighter the shading. The higher the number, the darker the shading. So 900 will be dark or 200 would be lower. But yeah, the point is that Tailwind has very verbose classes. So when you have, um, when you're applying a class repetitively, what I like to do is just save it in a variable and then you can slap it on in there and it works just great. So that's all I got for this video. I will see you in the next one. We will be building the next part of our landing page and we will be building a daily workout controller or I don't know what we're going to do. I got to figure it out, but thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and listen to my podcast, etc.